funny, funny kitty, Nala. Oh, yeah. Hello. Welcome back to I Love. I am Podan, and we've got Nala the Kitty Kitty here. And on today's episode, we've got the Atari 50 holiday update. Oh, yeah. Over at Digital Eclipse, they decided to give us 12 new games as an update for free. That includes 11, oh, later Nala, 11 2600 games and one Lynx Gem. Oh, yeah. But before we get into that, let's check out some Atari news. First of all, on the Atari 50 collection, they decided with the update to let us know that there would be more updates like this coming in 2024. So that is fantastic, and I can't wait. Hey, let's add some more links and some more Jaguar games. Oh, yeah. That would be fantastic. Next, Atari Recharged Collections 3 and 4. Oh, yes. A limited run announced that these are available for pre-order and with this Atari Collections 1 and 2 for the Recharge games is also up again so you can get all four if you missed out or just grab the new ones for your collection. Fantastic and these are awesome. Beefing up that physical media collection. Super duper cool. Next we have a really, really cool one. A shout out, of course, to Sabretooth Retro for all the fantastic work he did on the Club VCS fanzine because, oh my God, look what I have here in my hand. He got us printed editions and there is a limited run of these that you can pick up. I will have a link in the description below for you to pick these up while they are available. And as long as they sell, We'll have them printing all of them. That is awesome. I love this. And of course, if you guys remember, in addition to all the fantastic articles we have here about the recharged games. Oh, the sweet ads. Oh, yes, yes. Ooh, how Atari's doing. This is a great article. And if you were even wondering anything, this is your read right here. Read this. And, of course, where is it? Oh, come on, come on, come on! The, oh, look! It's me! Oh, that is awesome! A whole interview about me, my channel, and even my brother gets in on there talking about the art for the channel. So that is super duper cool. And even a mention of Ballistic Coffee Boy in the back. Awesome, awesome. I do love the extra editions, like saying that it is a limited edition print issue. And all around, this is just incredible. Nostalgic vibes all around. I feel like I was reading a Nintendo Power or something. Oh, man. Mm. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much. I'm so glad I have that. Oh, yes. And extra little update and cool news i did get my 2600 plus i got the whole thing in one big box i just got it the other day so that is awesome i'm just checking it out i'm gonna film the unboxing and then i'm gonna check it out make sure i check it out in depth so i got some sweet info for it and then i'm gonna do a video for that most likely early in january probably after the update highlight video oh yeah and on the 2600 plus front, I saw over on Atari Age that John Hancock seems to have started up a conversation about firmware updates and the possibility of what we could see coming and when. Apparently, uh, one of the people at, I believe it's Playon, responded mentioning that they have a like kill or hit list that they are going after, including things like 7800 support and homebrew support, expanding on all of that. And oh yes, this is the kind of stuff that we want. I'll link a description down below. If you're not on these forums, get on the forums and get into the conversations because that'll help out all that good stuff. Now, before we get into the games, Let's check out the cool trailer that they gave us, highlighting the games, and then we'll play each one real quick. Oh, yeah!
awesome bunch of games. Now, I was definitely hoping that we would get something like this, but definitely didn't expect it. And so soon, of course. So right away here, we get 12 new games. And as I said before, super cool that like they can just add this stuff in there slowly and just make this into more than just a celebration. It can become like an archive collection. So let's get right into the 12 games. We're going to go through them in alphabetical order. We will check out all the 2600 games. There are 11. And then the Lynx Gem, which is a super duper cool game. I couldn't believe how awesome the game was. I had never played that one. A few of these games I had never actually played. And that is awesome. I love experiencing new games when I play collections like this always. So, first of all, we got this one I believe was a homebrew, Adventure 2. The adventure continues. Let's check this out. Once again, you must dodge deadly dragons, retrieve the enchanted chalice, and return to the castle. Return it to the castle, but this time you'll have to explore the deadly fire and ice kingdoms. This official sequel to the Atari 2600 Classic was created by Kurt Vendel in 2005 for the Atari Flashback 2 Plug and Play Gaming Console. Oh, cool! Incorporating elements from the Atari 5200 homebrew game by Ron Lloyd. Ah, very neat. So that's fantastic. All right, let's get into this. All right, come on now. It's not. There we go. There we go. Okay. So far, it looks the same. Oh! No! Not not the dragon! I mean, it's belly. I mean, it's belly. Come on, start over. Start over. Get away from me, dragon. Get away from me, duck dragon. Here we go. Here we go. Ooh, 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 ooh. Get away, get away, get away. Get away, get away, get away. Bah. Come on, come on. That dragon is close. Let's go this way. Ooh, trapped there too. Okay, looks like we gotta go this way. Oh, it's a dead end too. Ah! Ooh, you can run or dodge like. Oh, this way is where we gotta go. We gotta go this way. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's a dead end too. Okay, we got ourselves the bridge. We've got the bridge. Okay, where's the bridge taking us? I like that background graphic. That is super cool. Let's bring this over here. I bet we are going to need this for something. Oh, yes. Okay, so far we can keep going this way. Oh, yeah. Adventure's awesome. It's cool that somebody made a sequel to it. And it's more official than I expected it to be. I thought that this was just a straight-up homebrew. That's neat that it's like a uh, inspired by homebrew. Ooh, 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 he stole my stuff. But there's the key. How'd the key come there? Did the bat drop it off or something? Oh, let's grab that and get the hell out of here. Woo! Come on, come on. I want to get into the castle. Into the castle. It's up here, right? Right? Yeah. No? Yeah, there we go. What's this? Ooh. Ooh. I bet you gotta do something with this with this dark key now. I wonder what though. Oh, I wonder what. That is super cool. But I actually bet a lot of people are already familiar with this game since it's been around for quite a bit. So let's get into the next one. After this one, Adventure 2, we're going to go into Aqua Venture. This is one of my faves, and this was an XP release, so that's really cool. This one's a prototype game that is now officially released. Hey, look at that. They even got it in there. Very cool. In this rare 1983 prototype, you must dive to the bottom of the ocean floor to collect treasure while dodging dangerous sea creatures and managing your oxygen supply. 
A victim of the 1983 industry crash, AquaVenture was completed but left unpublished for years. Mysteriously, it does not appear in Atari internal documents of the era. Atari officially released it on a 2600 cartridge in 2022. Super cool. I hope uh, other companies start taking notice of this whole, like, uh, being able to release your old games again. Old games, old consoles, come on. If we're willing to buy it and give you money, let's do this. Let's do this, everybody. What's the big deal? Can't say you're going to lose money if we're going to give it to you. Oh, yeah, come on, come on. Let's get that treasure. Let's get that treasure. Okay. Yes! Super cool. This one's awesome. It just keeps getting deeper and deeper. Just getting that deep, 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 deep treasure. Ooh, ooh, ooh. See? Or these the seahorses, I bet, right? Oh, yeah! We got one more screen. Oh, come on! Yeah! Two screens! Two, two whole screens. Look at that. Can we get deeper? Can we get deeper? Come on, Aqua. Let's venture! Yeah! Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, here it is, here it is. Here's the treasure. I love how the cavern gets thinner. It keeps getting more dangerous, more deadly as you go. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. You get away from me, you damn pan fishes. No! Yeah! You too! What? What? Never. Never. Make me do that again. Because I ran into the, the fish explosion. How dare you. How dare you. Gotta look out for those exploding fish, I guess. Come on, come on. We can do this. Ooh. Ooh, dang it. No. No! We're gonna start over. We lost all our lives. Never. Come on, come on. Ooh, he went down on me. He went and got me on the on the swim down. What's up, Nala? You decided to come back? What? No, you left us. You can't come back. Come on. Come on, kitty. Oh crap! I gotta get the treasure, don't I? Come on. Ooh, ooh, don't swim onto the fish. That's no good. No good at all. Come on. Get to the mermaid. Yes! That is a fun game. It's actually quite easy to understand it, but then, of course, you know, hard to master. The old Atari way. What's next? Next, we've got good old bowling. Boom! Good old-fashioned bowling. A fan favorite from 1979. Bowling challenges players to knock down up to 10 pins which e with each roll of their bowling ball. The VCS version recreates accurate scoring for two players while gameplay variations allow the players to hook and even steer the ball after it's thrown. Oh, that's freaking fantastic. This was Larry Kaplan's last VCS game for Atari before leaving the company to co-found Activision. <whistles> Crazy. Mm. You know what? You can tell. kind of has that look of their types of games. All right, let's do this. Yeah! Oh, look at that. You can give it a curve. Ooh, that's neat. Oh, that's neat. Ooh, yeah! This is awesome. You, you can hit it 
after it's going. That's so cool. Come on, come on, come on. Boom. Yeah. That's so cool. This is neat. I've never seen a side scrolling bowling game before. Come on, come on. Boom. Yes. That's a spare. That's a spare. Who likes a spare? Whoosh. Ooh, so close. Yes, another spare, another spare, double spares, double spares, double spares. Bowling is amazing. It's so much fun in a video game. I mean, Wii Bowling was amazing. The other bowling game was awesome from the last time. Oh man, it's just an easy thing to turn into a video game, I guess. Boom. Triple spares. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Come on. Give me a strike. Give me that strike. Give me that strike. Oh! One away. We can get the spare. Get the spare. There we go. That's four spares in a row. It's a good score right there. Come on. Come on. Strike! Oh, I guess maybe not a strike. Is that a tic-tac-toe board? <laughs> That's a strike. Strike! Ooh, that was almost a strike. Just a straight shot. Straight shot strike. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, no. My, my angle missed. No! Two strikes. That is awesome. Come on. Give it. Give it. Give it. Give it. Give it. Ooh, almost. Ooh, that's that's no good. Come on. Yes. Get that spare. Pick up that spare. Come on. Here we go. Here, here we go. Ooh, dang it. Now I'm starting to hit it too early. A little too early. Whoosh. Yes, it's interesting. Usually I don't play sports types of games, but bowling is is always a good. So that was my score. 151. It's not bad. Not bad, not bad at all. See so, you now that's that's an awesome game. And by a legend, of course. So let's get into the next one right away. Circus Atari. This is a well-known game, of course. And a fan fave as well. A variation on breakout. Circus Atari challenges players to pop balloons at the top of the screen using a paddle controller to launch clowns via a teeter-totter from the ground below. At least in 1980, Circus Atari was very likely inspired by a similar Exidy arcade game simply called Circus, which appeared a year earlier. And we know this stuff too because... Uh, a lot of those developers said that they were usually just mimicking a lot of the games in the arcades at the time to make games for the 2600. Super cool. Alright, let's see how this works. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Okie dokie. That is hilarious looking. You know, I've never actually played this game. That's freaking funny. Splat goes the guy. You know what? That's that's a total lie. What am I thinking, Podan? Of course I've played this game. It's in Atari Mania as one of the mini games. Jeez. Alright, let's try that again. Come on, Circus Atari. Circus Atari. Whew, that's hard. Can I Oh What the hell am I thinking? Yeah! Yeah! There we go. Now we're getting it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bang. Bang. Okay, I'm, I'm not understanding how to get your guy to fly higher. Maybe you just hold it? Nope. You're supposed to tap it. You are supposed to tappy dappy. Tap a tap a tap a lap a. Ooh, it's a little sensitive little guy. Huh. 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 
Oh man, that's a hard one. Well, I'm not I'm not the greatest at that one, but that's okay. Don't have to be good at them all. All right. What's next? Next fifth one, double dunk. Uh oh. Uh oh. We're going into basketball. One of the final few games produced for the 2600, 1989, Wofta. That's late. Nintendo was rocking it hard at that time. Double Dunk represented a dramatic visual upgrade from the original basketball game released in 1978. It's a two-on-two half-court contest with true-to-life details like play calling, foul detection, shot clock violations, and three second lane violations. Many of these options can be toggled off if the player is not looking for a realistic simulation. Very cool. Very neat. Let's get that bad boy going. Let's see here. Yep, 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 yep. All right, let's do it. I think you gotta wait a second for it to start is all. All right, let's dunk. Let's dunk. Dunk it, dunk, dunk it, dunk, dunk, dunk it. Come on. How do you get this one? There we go, there we go. Yeah! Okay, almost, almost. Out of bounds. What? What? I had the ball for five seconds. Five seconds. That's so funny. Basketball games on the Atari. Ooh, not 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 my cup of tea. But I do, of course, love the art. I love all the art. And I guess, man, if you played this game and you were good at it, whew, let me know, because this one is a rough one. So that's double dunk. Let's get to the next one. Maze craze. This is kind of cool. It's just a simple little maze game. Maze Craze, subtitled A Game of Cops and Robbers, yeah weird, Maze Craze aka Maze Mania in its Sears release randomly generates a series of blocks as an abstraction of crowded city streets, oh okay, the red and blue players compete to see who can escape the maze first, while game variants give the player the ability to plant obstacles in the way of their opponent. After completing work on the maze craze, designer Rick Maurer went on to create the VCS version of Space Invaders. Oh, very cool. Very, very cool. All right, let's see. Okay. Wow. Oh, this is neat. You know, I think I had the cartridge for this. This is really cool. It's just literally a maze. Kind of neat, actually. A virtual maze. This is totally where you gotta go. All the way. All the way. We're going all the way. All the way. Nope, it's this one. You gotta get to the outside edge there. I get it. I get it. I get it. Who's the maze craziest? All right, let's do it again. Oh, that's cool. It's like it generates it. Can you just... Oh, that's so neat. That is awesome. I wonder if there's like a, so many that are in there or if it really is somehow randomly generating it. God, that's so cool. That's some old school tech there. Old school tech. Old school tech. Old school tech. Okay, this is over here. Yes, yes, yes. Nice! Very, very cool. Very cool indeed. Let's get on to the next one, because that's just, that's simple, obviously. It's just solving mazes, but super fun. If you do mazes on, like, a pad and pencil, pfft, right there. Virtual mazes. Super neat. Super neat indeed. Next, we have Miniature Golf. Where's this bad boy? Miniature Golf, huh? 79. In an interpretation of the popular family pastime, Players attempt to putt their golf ball around nine playfields 
populated with tricky boundaries and moving obstacles. Released in 79, Miniature Golf, Arcade Golf, in its Sears Telegames release, still enjoys a following for its accessible mechanics and enduring challenge. Ooh, well look at that. It's th That literally looks like, uh, what's it called? It kind of looks like uh, Adventure. Let's see here, here we go. So how do we hit the ball? Is that what you do? Oh my god, is that what you do? How do you hit your ball? Oh, okay. Okay, I get it now. There we go. Much better. <laughs> this is hilarious. It's like the game where those mechanics from all the internet golf games came from. That's awesome. I never saw, I didn't think that was coming. Whoosh. Yeah, I hit my ball. Yeah. Hoi! Nice. This is kind of neat. Maybe there's something I'm missing about how to get the ball to go a little faster. There we go. That's better. Oh, that was so close. Come on now. Yeah! That is cool. That is a really good one. Miniature golf is awesome. Super duper cool. Very, very neat. So what do we got here? We have gone through... Ooh, seven. We're on to number eight. Number eight is Moto Rodeo. This is so neat. Because I did not think that this was going to be as cool as it is. But it's basically a monster truck version of uh, Enduro or uh, Excite Bike, that's the thing I'm thinking of. Monster trucks come out to play in this two player split screen racer released in 1990 as one of the Atari 2600's final games. Moto Rodeo offers deceptively sophisticated gameplay as players navigate through obstacles like mud pits and ramps. Points are awarded for crushing cars, demolishing walls, and landing from huge ramp jumps with skillful accuracy. So like flattening your landing just like in Excitebike. Developed by Axlia, Axelon? A company found out, oh, that's right, this is the, Bo the Bushnell company so that he could put games on the Atari again. Super cool, or at least his ideas. That's super awesome. And I love that style of art box too. Very, very cool. This is neat. This is a good one. I like this one quite a bit. I was playing this. Whew, super fun. I didn't even understand what it was at first, and then I started playing, and I was like, whoa. So let's see here. We want this on easy for sure. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm on the top. There we go. And there we go. See, you gotta land right. Go. Smash that wall. Smash, smash. This is super cool. I don't know if there's any other way to get through there. Can you jump? Oh, you can jump. Oh, I didn't know you could jump. Oh, that's so cool. And you need to hit those points in the air, probably. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like you're a skateboard monster truck. Oh, it's so funny. It's so fun. Oh, and there's a jumper! Oh, yeah! There's a wall to smash! Bam, 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 bam! Whoosh! Oh, jump off that! Yeah, smash the wall, smash the wall! Yeah! Oh, this is so neat. I love the little truck. Oh, it jumps! Oh, it flips! Yeah! Whoosh! 
Oh, this is a neat one. Jumper. Ooh, crush that car, crush that car, crunch. Crunch. That's super cool. That is awesome. That is a cool one. Very, very neat. Smash, smash, smash. That is, that is super cool. Moto Rodeo is a definite super duper cool one. What do we got here? Number nine. Ooh, ooh. Are you ready to return to the haunted house? Oh yeah. Homebrew, this one is a homebrew. Programmer Anthony Wong created this game in 2005 to continue the legacy of the original haunted house. Players must explore the ghost-riddled mansion of Zachary Graves only by finding Graves' skull and returning it to its underground crypt will the town of Spirit Bay be freed from its supernatural curse. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome. And of course, very similar to Haunted House because this is a sequel to it for us. Oops. Oh, look at that. Okay, so that resets us. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. There we go. I don't know what this is going to do, but let's bring it with. Let's bring it with anyway. Ah, ghost! Yeah, take the arrow, ghosty. No! Oh, it's dark. Ah! Oh, I think I got ghosted. I got ghosted. Let's go up here. Oh, there's a barrier there. Okay, okay. this. I don't know what it is, but it lets me through. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Can't go that way. We just want, want to go this way. Uh oh, it's dark in here. Uh oh, uh oh. Whoa. This stuff gets trippy. What is this? Whoa! Wow! Can you imagine playing this back in the day? And the original one even? Like, it's so cool. Oh look, it's very much like adventure. Looks like I got some. Whoa! Ghost! Wow! That's cool. That's super cool. Alright. Next! Next, next, next. This is another prototype. This one is uh, one of the more recent XP releases. Save Mary. This is cool because it's uh, very much... Hey, this is another game by that company too, uh, right here, that Secret Quest. But yeah, Save Mary is uh, another one of those sweet games that almost got lost because of the video game crash. Mary is unfortunately stranded at the bottom of a canyon that's filling with water. It's up to you to build her a platform high enough for you to reach her with your crane and pull her to safety. Designed by Todd Fry, the, cre the creator of Sword Quest in 1990, this action puzzle game was not officially released until it appeared on the Atari Flashback 2 plug and play console. See, I think that's something that people really took, it, took for granted with the Atari Flashback consoles. I mean, the Atari Flashback was trailing, blazing a trail of releasing prototype, homebrew, and unreleased games for Atari for years. And they must have gotten some sort of permission, otherwise they probably would have cut those ties or something like that. So that's kind of neat. Very, very cool. Let's get into this beast. And of course, yeah, this one is, uh, it's one of the XP games coming soon. Axlon. Oh, that's cool. That's that company again. Neato. This is neat. You gotta grab your your pieces. You gotta drop them for her to jump onto. Oops. Yeah, I'm trying to help, lady. I'm trying. This is cool. It's kind of like that oily game. Uh-oh. 
Did I mess up somehow? Okay, there we go. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming, Mary. I'm coming. Oh, this is neat. So this is just like that. It's kind of like that uh, ant, ant eater game. That's really neat. I like that. Are we getting close? Are we getting close? See, this is cool. You gotta get it. Leave a little gap so that way, she's not. Oops. She doesn't get a. There we go, there we go. There you go. There. Can I can I get her? I gotta be able to get her now. Yay! Nice! Oh, that's cool. You get bonus points for every piece of ground. See, that's that's pretty neat, and it's actually really complicated for, like, this type of game, honestly. Oh, look at this. There's different types of debris that you use, too. It's not just, like, the same stuff going on. That's pretty cool. Ooh, it becomes a little more like Atari than, I know, mean, uh, like Tetris then. Because you gotta put the pieces together. Interesting, interesting. Ooh, look at that. That's some complex shit. What happens if you use like something like this? Oh, maybe you're supposed to pick those up. things fall like that. Maybe you're supposed to do something different with them. This is a good one. This is a good one. Let's crush Mary for the end, for the finale. Come on, Mary. Oh, what? You can't crush her on these? These aren't heavy enough to crush her ass? Yeah! Crushed her! Take that, Mary! Yeah! Alright. After we saved Mary, let's get to the last one, Super Football. This one will be a quick one because, of course, it's football. Let's see, developed by Star Raiders. Oh, Star Raiders? Hey, look at that. Star Raiders programmer Doug Nebauer. Nebauer? 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 Nebauer, there it is. Super Football is a particularly impressive example of what developers could achieve after a decade of 2600 development, the smooth sprite animations and the player's perspective down the scrolling gridiron offered a clear direction to sports game developers of the 16-bit era. Oh, that's cool. So this became like the template of what was going on after. Oh, wow, look at that. Look at that. That looks neat. Ooh, a kickoff. Okay, okay. There we go, all right, we got our kickoff. Yeah, come on, buddy. Ooh, ooh. Switching sides or something? Well, that's neat looking. I really like how that looks. That's a cool one. All right, obviously, Super football, it's super football. So let's get out of that. But that's that's uh, the last one for the 2600 games right there. Now let's get into that final gem. Oh yeah, because they did give us a super cool surprise. Warbirds for the, uh, the Lynx. This is neat. A Lynx exclusive, Warbirds offered first person aerial dogfighting in World War I era biplanes. 
Warbirds was programmed by longtime Atari employee Rob Zdibble, 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 who also converted Missile Command for the 5200. Very, very cool. Now, <clears throat> I never played the Lynx, but damn, does this game look cool for 1990. A console handheld that was going up against the Game Boy at the time. Pretty, pretty impressive stuff, honestly, for the time. Let's see here. Let's do a duel. Let's do the Milk Run. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Whoosh. There he goes. Let's get that sucker. I'm, even still pl I'm playing this with the friggin' joystick here. Take them down. Take them down. I love the animations. Look at those little guns shaking. Look how cool the ground looks, too. God, that's so neat look at it. Take it down. Take it down. Yeah, baby! Yeah! Look at that sucker blow. Look at those clouds. Yeah! Air Victory Rank Rookie. Super cool. I do love that they shrink the screen with a big, 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 big ass frame. Because it definitely makes the game look better on a huge TV. And you don't you don't need it that huge. So that's good. Let's see here. Let's try another one. Let's try one more before we get out of there. Before we get out of here. Oh yeah. Really, the Red Baron that I'm fighting here? Joystick in his heart. Let's cut this way. Which way did he go? Turn, turn, buddy, turn. Oh! I think I'm losing track of the ground. I think I'm losing track of the ground here. Going through clouds. Going through clouds. Oh my god, it looks so neat. Oh, look at that. It's so cool. Now, where the hell is he? Oh, this sucker's got me. He's got me in the pipe. Come on, come on, come on. Where is he? Oh, oh we're going to hit this dude. We're gonna hit this Baron. Yeah, come on! Oh, I wanted a mid-air collision! That would've been fantastically funny. Okay. I think you get the idea that is basically <clears throat> the entire idea of this game is to uh, do air battles. That's how you pause, huh? Oh, look at that. That's cool. Oops, we didn't want that. We didn't want that. We're gonna do that, Baboomski. So that was a pretty unexpected one to have this Warbirds in there for the 1991 release of the Lynx. That is super cool. Oh man, let's call it there for the gameplay. That is all 12 of the games added with the holiday update for the Atari 50 collection. Now this was of course added to all versions of the Atari 50, not just the VCS. In honor of being an Atarian myself, I of course played it on the Atari VCS, but you can update on any console you have the game on. One more quick cool note before we go, uh, Digital Eclipse, if you like the style of game that they've done here, they actually have another game like this. That is, of course, the making of Karataka. 
that is a fantastic game tons of cool information and of course presented the same way as the atari 50 collection which is a really cool interactive way that a lot of video games could be done this way why not why not play the history of a video game it is interactive media by the way oh yeah and on the way in production coming soon one more game like this llama soft the jeff minter story that's going to be cool and there are trailers out for this i'll put a link to the description in the description below for that one and a link to digital eclipse because they're always posting videos for their stuff what's up panzer did you come in just at the end here oh yeah you did i would love to hear in the comments down below which one of these 12 games are you enjoying the most? Any surprise you? I, of course, love Aquaventure as it's one of my favorites. But bowling was surprisingly fun, and I do admit I'm going to be playing the hell out of that because bowling video games that are easy to play are always enjoyable. But you know what's coming soon? Oh, yeah! Oh yeah, right around the corner. So, coming next time, we might have to have ourselves some Christmas shenanigans. So, as always, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Oh yeah, let's get back into the battle. Yeah. Challenge for you. Let him hope for a while and blow him away. 